In this tutorial, I will show you how cardboard and hot glue can be utilized to make a fiber reinforced actuator. These are all the supplies you will need. I have put a complete list in the description. This is a low cost alternative to the 3D printed molds typically used in the fabrication of this type of robot. First, cut six rectangles out of cardboard. Glue the two five inch pieces together so they form a block. To prevent the rubber from flowing into the cardboard, wrap the block in scotch tape and fold down the edges. Smear hot glue on the top and bottom to hold down the tape. Repeat this process with the two 6 inch pieces, however only three sides need to be covered. Glue the block to a sheet of cardboard and trace the bottom edge with hot glue. Glue the rest of the pieces to the sheet of cardboard so that they form a wall centered around the block. To prevent the mold from leaking, seal all joints with hot glue. I usually do this twice just to be safe. This is what the mold looks like after it has been sealed. As you can see, all the joints are covered in thick layers of hot glue. Now it is time to make the mold for the bottom of the robot. Draw a rectangle on a piece of cardboard that measures 7 inches by 1.5 inches. Trace the lines with hot glue. After the glue cools, add another layer. Do this two or three times so that the walls of the mold are at least a quarter of an inch thick. Cut a piece of printer paper so that it fits in the mold but does not touch the edges. Mix some EcoFlex and fill the first mold so that the center block is only submerged beneath an eighth inch of rubber. Do not fill the mold completely. When filling the second mold, remove the paper and spread a thin layer of EcoFlex across the bottom. Then return the paper and press it flat before filling the mold. Wait at least 4 hours for the rubber to cure. To remove the rubber from the molds, pry out one side and gently pull upwards. Be careful not to rip the paper core of the second mold. This is what the rubber from the first mold looks like. As you can see, it is very stretchy. The second piece, due to its paper core, does not stretch. This is vital to the function of the robot. The inside of the top piece often has imperfections from the first mold. While these will usually not affect the robot's performance, it is safer to remove them. Make a small batch of EcoFlex and paint the inside of the top piece. This will fill in all the imperfections made by the original mold. Now it is time to put the two halves together. Pour some EcoFlex onto the piece with the paper and spread it evenly. Then, put the other piece on top. Deposit excess rubber onto the outside of the robot where the piece is made. Wait at least 4 hours for the EcoFlex to cure. This robot will be powered by a squeeze bowl. To make one, you will need one plastic bottle, preferably a liter or larger, about 2 feet of 1 8 OD pneumatic tubing, a hot glue gun, hammer, and a nail. First, puncture the bottle cap with a nail. Then, insert the tubing through the hole in the bottle cap. Seal the cap by surrounding the tubing with hot glue. Screw the cap back on to complete the squeeze bowl. After the robot has cured, puncture one side with the nail. Insert the free end of the tubing into the hole made by the nail. Gently squeeze the bottle to inflate the robot. As you can see, this robot curls, however it is not yet complete. As more air is added, the top part inflates like a balloon, getting both longer and taller. For our purpose, we only want the top of the robot to get longer. So, we will limit the upward expansion by wrapping the robot with ribbon. This is where it gets the name Fiber Reinforced Actuator. Cut about 20 feet of ribbon and tie the center to one end of the robot. Wrap one end of the ribbon up the robot counterclockwise and the other clockwise. It is vital that the two sides of the ribbon are wound in opposite directions so that the robot bends properly. Low wrap densities result in bubbles forming on the top of the robot. However, higher wrap densities could inhibit the curling of the actuator. 
The balance between the two is best determined empirically. To increase traction on the underside of the robot, cover the wrapping with a strip of tape or another layer of rubber. And that's it. You have just made a simple soft robotic gripper. This technique is not limited to just fabricating simple robots like the one shown. It can be built upon to make robots of varying sizes and complexity. All you need is a little ingenuity, cardboard, tape, and hot glue. Thank you for watching.